All right, guys, Raw Rossler here, and today I thought I'd give you a little bit of a different video. Um, today I thought I would give you an insight into what I have been playing on my PlayStation 4 since, well, the turn of the year, but really before that. Since about October of last year, I actually did an updated PlayStation 4 collection, um, probably around then, maybe a little bit before, maybe about early October, because I believe I got my WWE 2K19 in there. Now I wanted to kind of show you the four games that I've been playing since then. I've only put, picked up four games since then, and I have beat them all, so I just thought, well, most of them. So I just thought I'd do a quick video discussing each game and what I thought about them. I haven't really done one of these in a while, so I thought it'd be a very, very good idea to kind of uh, give a little bit more diversity to my channel. Obviously, too much of it these days is, is wrestling related. So I do like putting up different videos like this. Um, so the first game I'm going to talk about, I picked up on release, well, a couple of days after release date. I believe it was about October 26th. This game came out of last year, 2018. And I believe I picked it up probably around the 29th. It is, of course, the biggest game of last year. Red Dead Redemption 2. Um, obviously, everyone uh, who's... I've just got to move my phone. Everybody who's talked about Red Dead Redemption 2 is giving it nothing but praise. Uh, there's not a, a lot more I can really say about Red Dead Redemption 2. I finished it. I finished the epilogue. I haven't played any of the online yet. I have heard that some of the online is a bit cheap. Um, I've heard that guns cost a lot of money and apparently microtransactions seem a little bit forced in. But I have not uh, dealt with any of that firsthand yet, so I cannot tell you firsthand. Um, but from what I know of the game and from what I've played, of the single player story. Red Dead Redemption 2 is arguably the best game on the console. Um, for me, the best games on the PlayStation 4, you know, up to this point, were The Witcher 3, Bloodborne, Horizon, God of War, games like that. Red Dead Redemption 2 has actually maybe exceeded all of those expectations. I think it's better than the first one, which I don't think many people have actually gone on and said. I think that it's the best Rockstar game. I think that Arthur Morgan is one of the most compelling protagonists in a game ever. Um, the game's story is so well structured, so well layered, so well told. It is engrossing, no matter how long it is. I know a lot of people said it was very long. I disagreed. I think that it was a great length. I think that we don't need every game to be, you know, 40 hours like Red Dead Redemption's story is. But Red Dead Redemption is a game that deserves your attention for that length of time. I don't think at any point you should leave. Um, apart from the epilogue, which is way too long to really be an epilogue, it's a good seven hour epilogue, um, which to me, it didn't detract from the experience. I just thought it was a little bit long. There was some of it that could be cut, especially the first act of the epilogue. The fact that there was two parts of an epilogue kind of shocked me and took me back a little bit. Um, I'm not gonna spoil any of the game here, the epilogue, the end of the main uh, game, you see that coming, but it's still very uh, emotional, very um, very hard to digest. Um, and then the epilogue is is kind of like just tying up loose ends, which is okay. Um, the ending would, especially the epilogue, the, the ending of the whole game, would have more power if Red Dead Redemption 2 didn't have the problem of being a prequel. Um, you know, the, the fact that it is a prequel and you know the fate of John Marsden, um, who of course is not the playable, uh, the main protagonist through most of uh, Red Dead Redemption 2. Um, he is of course the main protagonist in the first game though. Um, it, it does, it detracts from the game a little bit, but I don't think that's a problem that the game has an issue with really. Like, I think the game overshoots it. There's, there's plenty of games and series that have done prequels and have overshot it, and I think Red Dead Redemption 2 is one of the best examples of that. The character development in the game is excellent. Your crew, your gang, are all detailed characters with intricate backstories that you you find out throughout the world, and it's a breathtakingly well-realised game. You can tell that the budget for the game is essentially high, and I think it's great to appreciate AAA developers sometimes because obviously a lot of the time people don't like giving AAA developers credit because usually they, you know, they shoehorn in microtransactions or they cut half their game out and sell it as DLC. Red Dead Redemption 2 is not that. Red Dead Redemption 2 
It is a purely 100% completed product. And that is one of the best things about it. Um, it is a masterpiece. It's 10 out of 10. It is one of the best games you will ever play. Probably. Arthur Morgan is one of the best characters you will ever take hold of. And um, Red Dead Redemption 2 is an absolute masterpiece. I beat this, um, I'm going to say, like, November. Just an insane journey. And each act is so well layered, so well structured. It is an absolute masterpiece of a game. Uh, I was very much grateful that I uh, went out and spent my hard-earned £50 on that beautiful game. Uh, next game I'm going to talk about was one of my Christmas presents from my girlfriend Sherelle. I love you, sweetie. Thank you so much. Uh, it was Hitman 2. Obviously, you all know Hitman is one of my favourite series of all time. Hitman 2 continues to me the uh, the rise of the series. I would argue that Hitman 2 is one of the best instalments in the series ever. Like, I'd argue that this is as good as the, the first one, the 2016 reboot, essentially. I'd argue that this is better than Sour Assassin, Absolution. Um, it can contend with Contracts and Blood Money to me as one of the best in the series and arguably the most accessible in the series. Uh, the new maps, the Miami map, the Santa Fortuna map, the Mumbai map, the um, the Isle of Seagull and the Woodson Creek map, uh, map sorry, are all excellently crafted maps and I would argue each one is better than the maps from the original game. If you bought the original game, like I did twice, um, then you can actually just download the maps from the original game into Hitman 2, which I really appreciate, because it just means I don't need both games installed at once, um, which is a problem for people like me who've only got 500 gigabytes of storage on their PS4, because they didn't buy a terabyte, and they didn't have an external hard drive. Well, I needed that. What I mean. Sorry about that, guys. Um, but no, the maps are all expertly crafted. The opportunities, the mission stories, as they're called now, are hilarious, but also ingenious. Like, you can tell that Io, who obviously now broke off from Square Enix, and they were, basically, they were partnered up with uh, Warner Brothers. It was one of the best things, I think, for the company, in all honesty. When Eidos um, broke, broke up all those years ago and turned into Io, um... I was worried for them when Square Enix picked them up because I know Square Enix's history. And I wasn't particularly happy with Absolution. Everybody knows this. Um, if you know me, you know that I'm not particularly happy with Absolution. I thought it was a good game. I just didn't think it was great. Uh, I thought that the first Hitman game, the 2016 reboot, was very, very good. I think this one is great. This one's excellent. This has become one of my favourite games Probably not even just in the series, just ever. Like, genuinely, this is this is why I wanted to do this video, because I really wanted to talk about some of these games, like Red Dead and Hitman, and two other games I'll talk about in a bit. But Hitman 2, excellent maps, excellent targets, excellent mission stories. The pure satisfaction of getting a silent assassin, or a silent assassin suit only, which I've done on several maps already, um, is so satisfying. I played a lot of Hitman um, at my, at, well, a lot of Hitman 2, at my girlfriend's actually in Hull. Um, so I played so much there just while she was at work during the day. And um, absolutely balls through it. Assault assassins, suit onlys, doing all these mission stories, getting high levels and all the all the missions so I can unlock new gear, new weapons, new um, new strat uh, sorry, new um, new gadgets, uh, new starting locations, new uh, Heidi agency pickup locations. Just an excellently crafted stealth game, and I think that if you are a fan of stealth but you've never experienced the Hitman series, then Hitman 2 is a great entry point, and I think you should play that. If you really enjoy a game like that, the HD, the Hitman HD Hands Collection was just released um, on PS4. I believe it was January 13th or something it was released, and I haven't picked it up yet. It's $44.99 at the minute, so part of me doesn't want to. Because um, it's a bit expensive still for two games. It's Absolution and Blood Money. I really want Blood Money. I'm not that fond of Absolution, so I don't really care about it. I will if I when I buy it inevitably, because I will. I'm kind of waiting to see if they release it on disc first. But when I do inevitably uh, uh, inevitably buy it, I will of course beat Blood Money and then beat Absolution. Um, but yeah, Hitman Two. This is like a nine out of ten. This is an excellent stealth game. One of the best games in the series, and arguably one of the best stealth games. 
of the past 10 years, really, the only real contenders I can think of are, like, your Metal Gear Solid 5, um, I suppose the other Hitman, but I do think that's better than Hitman 1. Um, but yeah, great game, really, really great game. Moving on to another great game, another present I got for Christmas. This was from my friend Jack, my neighbour, thank you so much for getting this for me. He got me Spyro the Reignited Trilogy in a year, and in a kind of console generation where remakes and remasters and ports have become the norm. Spyro the Reignited Trilogy is one of those um, remakes that has been given the most work. Like, this game, this, it looks like they worked from the ground up and made a brand new series of games. So far, I've 100%ed, well, 118%ed Spyro 3. Me and my friend Kieran, we literally play these Spyro games on nights, basically trying to 100% trying to all three. We've done Spyro 3, we've done Spyro 2, we're just about a quarter of the way through Spyro 1. It, it controls fantastically. Like, Spyro has never controlled this well. The PS2 games, the End of Dragonfly, Hero's Tale, New Beginning, those games, they controlled okay. This controls excellently. Spyro is so... He's not too sensitive, but he's he's the right amount of sensitive. Like, he, he controls perfectly. His his headbutt charge, the flame breath. There's... there's I never remembered Spyro being as hard at some point. Some of the Metro Speedways... Are insanely difficult, especially from in Spyro 3. The skateboarding in Spyro 3 was horrible. And um, there was a minecart um, kind of mini game I had to do in Spyro uh, Ripto's Rage number two, or Gateway to Glimmer, as it was called in this country, um, which was amazingly hard. But I, it was weird because, like, as hard as this all was, as angry as I was getting, I was invested and I kept going through the game. What seeked because I wanted to see what else the game had to offer. Looking at all the new character designs like Ripto and uh, Hunter, who was like now a full on cheater, you've got Laura, you've got Bianca. Obviously, Spyro's new design is fantastic. Um, Spyro's voice actor, as well, I believe, was Ray Mundo in um, Shaolin Showdown, one of my favorite kids' shows. If you've ever seen Shaolin Showdown, you had a good childhood. Um, you also got, like, Moneybags, who's my favourite Spyro character, who my, my friend Kieran hates, and I love Moneybags so much. But no, Spyro, the Reignited Trilogy, all three games are excellent. If I give you my favourite, probably three, just because I enjoy actually playing the other characters. Not Bentley, Bentley sucks. But I enjoy playing as Agent Nine, I enjoy playing as Sheila, and I enjoy playing as Sergeant Bird. Um, and I enjoy the skateboarding, especially the tricks stuff. I really, really enjoyed all that stuff. But yeah, Spyro the Reignited Trilogy is another great remake, and it it leads me straight into the next remake of a another PS1 masterpiece, another PS1 classic that actually only came out on the 25th of January, um, and I picked up a couple of days after it came out as well, and then I actually loved it so much that I went out and bought myself the DLC, the £12.99 DLC pack, and that is of course Resident Evil 2. Now, Resident Evil 2 is, of course, a remake of Resident Evil 2, the PlayStation 2, uh, sorry, PlayStation 1 game, also released on GameCube and the N64, everything, basically, back then. Um, Resident Evil 2, if you don't know, is my favourite survival horror game. Now, I say that because I've never counted Resident Evil 4 as a full-on survival horror game, and I do still prefer 2 to 7. 7, to me, is very good. It really is. I just don't consider it to be like this really high-level, fantastic game that I think everybody else seems to think. I think it has a couple of drawbacks. Uh, I think in terms of replay value, it doesn't have that much. Um, it doesn't have the, the, the obviously two scenarios like Resident Evil 2 does. But no, Resident Evil 2 was, as I said, my favourite survival horror game until I played through this. I've beaten... Scenario A and Scenario B. I did Scenario A as Leon. I did Scenario B as Claire. I beat them both within like five days. And this game is an excellent remake. It is basically just like Spyro. It's been worked from the ground up. They've used the Resident Evil 6 engine, the Resident Evil Revelations engine, but with the survival horror elements of the original trilogy of Code Veronica, a little bit of Resident Evil 4 in there, the uh, Raccoon City Police Department, honestly, when I first saw it in the game, it looked incredible. There's rooms and there's hallways that are identical to Resident Evil 2. And that's things I really, really like. Like, the things they had to keep the same were the things that worked. 
the RPD, the Raccoon City Police Department, is one of the most iconic locations in uh, survival horror, really. Uh, it's in PlayStation 1 gaming, like there's, there's Shadow Moses, there's the um, Spencer Mansion, there's, um, I suppose, the Crash Bandicoot world, the Spyro world, and then there's the RPD, and it looks incredible in 2019. Uh, Leon and Claire look incredible. The character models in this game are excellent. The zombies all growl and snarl, and the voice acting from them is top-notch. It is some of the best zombie voice acting you'll ever see. The game's soundtrack is impressive to, like, arguably the best Resident Evil soundtrack. To be fair, right, Resident Evil 2 is my favourite soundtrack from a survival horror game, easily. It's one of the reasons that I've always elevated that game above, like, 7 and 3 and Code Veronica and 1. Um, the soundtrack is fantastic. And when I learned that I could buy the original game soundtrack, which really should have been in the game anyway, as like an option, or as an unlockable, and I could buy like a couple of alternate outfits, and the Samurai Edge handgun, Wesker's Samurai Edge handgun, for like £12, because I had already spent money on the game, and because I was loving the game, I just decided I'm just going to do it. And, and, I mean, we are getting free DLC, we're getting three new stories, um, I believe one's a gun shop owner, one is the mayor's daughter, and the other one is uh, a forgotten soldier, which is really interesting. We're getting free DLC with that engine uh, in Raccoon City. That's really interesting, because we haven't ever really been able to see many other character stories in Raccoon City. We've seen Jill Valentine. We've seen um, Carlos Oliveira and those sort of characters, and Nikolai. But we, we haven't seen normal citizens, which is what I think that sort of DLC is going to do. Um, one of the other fantastic introductions to Resident Evil 2 is Mr. X. Now, Mr. X was in Scenario B of Resident Evil 2 on PlayStation 1. I, weirdly, have never beaten Scenario B on, uh, on PlayStation 1. I only ever did Scenario A as Leon, and I literally treated it as I was always just doing one playthrough. So, for example, when you get to the moment when you can choose the machine gun or the extra space in your pack, um, I just took both because I was never going to do another playthrough. Um, and here, Mr. X, uh, who was who in uh, the second campaign in Resident Evil 2, so I've never experienced him. He is in both campaigns. He is terrifying. His footsteps are loud. They are scary. Um, they Every time I left a room and I heard his footsteps or the music started, that his music, which they get, his music, the new music that they created for him, for this game, is scary and horrible. Um, but in all the right ways, scary and horrible. This game is grotesque. This game does not shy away from violence or blood or gore. It is fantastic as a survival horror game, as a Resident Evil game, and as just a, a shit your pants scary game. Like, it is one of the best survival horror games I will say ever crafted. And... I honestly have fallen in love with this game. This has become one of my favourite games of all time. Um, I'm probably going to play for it again, but just do Claire A, Leon B. Um, you also unlock the fourth survivor mode, the hunk mode, which basically means you've got to go from the sewers all the way to um, the uh, exit of rac uh, exit of the police department uh, with with what you've got on you. And then once you beat that, you've got you unlock tofu mode. Um, the other things that are great about this game are like how they twist boss fights and boss fights are better in this game than they were in Resident Evil 2, the original by far. Um, the, the Birkin boss fights, the Tyrant boss fights, um, they're all, I don't know, they're all just more powerful in this game. Um, the labs and everything, the labs, the sewers, the crocodile, as opposed to just shooting the barrel um, when the crocodile gets it in his mouth, like in the original, in this one, you've just got to run from it and then you shoot it. It just, to me, it, it put more suspense there. Um, I, and when Resident Evil 2, when this version did those different things and changed up the formula and, and kind of subverted my expectations, I was stunned. I was shocked. I didn't, like when Mr. X turned up. Like, I knew he was in the game, but I thought he'd just be in the second scenario. Guess what? He turned up, he moved a helicopter away, I shot myself and run. 
Um, this game is hard. This game will be definitely hard if you're playing hardcore. I play it on standard. You can if you if you if you really don't want to play it. If you really want to play it, but you don't want it to be hard, go on the assisted mode because you should not have your enjoyment hindered by the difficulty. Um, I think the difficulty helps enjoyment. I think when you surpass something or you beat a boss, you feel so proud. It's like when you beat a puzzle. There's several puzzles in this game that were totally revamped and totally different from the original as well. And um, that, that made me excited because it was like a new thing. I was entering a new thing. It was original. It was natural. Um, but yeah, Resident Evil 2, absolutely excellent. I'm going to give this 10 out of 10. This is one of the best games of the year. I haven't played Kingdom Hearts yet, but part of me is planning on getting it. Um, but yeah, you've got to you've got to check out Resident Evil Two. If you are a fan of survival horror, you've got to be checking out Resident Evil Two. Um, one of the best survival horror games I'd argue ever made. And those are what those are the games I've been playing, guys. So I just wanted to kind of like update you. I know I don't I haven't talked about games a lot on this channel. My plan is to talk about games more when I get new games. My plan is to give you initial impressions of them, which actually I was going to do with Resident Evil 2, but I kind of beat it so quickly to the point where I never had a chance to do a video on it, just because I love the game so much. Um, those games, I, I, it was weird, like, those games are all excellent. Like, I haven't bought a game recently that I thought was crap, outside of, like, Hell and Neighbor, which I bought last year, which I thought was crap. Um, there's so many other videos I could do. I, I do want you guys to let me know what you think I could do. Um, my plan is to maybe do my pop vinyl. I need to do a video on pop vinyl. I need to do a video on what I got for Christmas still, and it's like February. But I'm, I'll probably skip that now and maybe just bring in a couple of things here and there. Um, I've got to talk about like maybe top tens and stuff like that that I could really, really do that I'd look forward to. I remember when I did video game versus that was a cool series. Maybe I'll bring that back at some point. Um, but I guess thanks for watching, guys. This has been Roll of lot. This has been a little bit of a different video today. But I like doing these videos. I like cataloging my thoughts on all these games too. Um, I like telling you guys what I think of all these games as well. And I hope you were interested. And I hope you enjoyed listening to me talking about all these games that I love. Um, thanks for watching, guys. This has been Robust Lot. Like, comment, subscribe for more. Tell me your thoughts. What did you think to Red Dead Redemption 2? What did you think to the ending? What did you think to Hitman 2? Do you think it was better than the original? Do you think it was better than any of the original games, the ADOS games? Uh, what do you think Spyro the Reignited Trilogy, which is your favourite Spyro in the trilogy? And what do you think to Resident Evil 2? Do you absolutely love it as much as I do and think it's one of the best survival horror games of all time? Thanks for watching, guys. This has been Revolver Rossler.